How's it going guys and welcome back to Upside Homemade. As always I'm Paul and today I'm going to be looking at something I've had on the, on the tip of my mind for a little while with a, an old work colleague of mine. We're going to have a little twist on chicken and waffles. Stick around and I'll show you what it's all about. So guys, chicken and waffles. So if normally what we'd have is a Belgian waffle sort of style with our chicken on top, some gravy. Uh, and then some garnish on top of that. We're going to follow that same sort of principle and I'll show you what we're doing with the waffle later on. So we're starting off today with some chicken mini breast fillets uh, or chicken goujons if you want to call them that. Um, you can buy these pre-packaged like this or if you've got any chicken breast or anything laying around obviously by all means slice that up. Obviously this is just going to be sort of deep fried chicken. You can use whatever you've got sort of laying around. Or if you've got some pre-done goujons already in your freezer that are breaded, crack on with that. Also, we've got some buttermilk. So we're going to be soaking our chicken in the buttermilk. We want to let that sit for at least an hour. Um, the longer the better, to be fair. The, but the buttermilk is going to help sort of soften the chicken, make it really juicy when we're cooking it. Oh, oh sorry, after we've cooked it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if we could leave it overnight, that would be absolutely perfect. So what we're going to do, just rinse the hands. We're not spreading salmonella around this kitchen. So I've got the chicken in a Ziploc bag. We're going to pour the buttermilk into the Ziploc bag. Massage that into the chicken, marinate that up, and then we're going to put that in the fridge, like I said, for a minimum of an hour. We're just going to pull that right off. That should be enough. So that's just a 300ml carton of buttermilk. Uh, and I've used three quarters of that in that in the uh, Ziploc bag. So as you can see, I'm massaging that chicken, get it evenly coated. I'm going to put that on a plate now, put it in the bottom of the fridge. So next on the agenda guys, while that chicken is marinating, uh, I'm going to mix up uh, a little flour uh, for the chicken for when we're breading it or dredging it, whatever you want to call it. So I've got some uh, smoked mould and sea salt, some peppercorns, I'm going to throw some mixed herbs in, ground coriander, garlic powder, onion granules, and then I've got around 200 grams of plain flour. It's not sieved, uh, it's just thrown in because we're just going to be using it for the dredging of the chicken. Uh, I mean, you can throw anything you want in this, it's just to flavour the chicken. So, in any quantities you want, whatever you like, throw it in. So, we've got our salt, our pepper, um, as much quantity as you think that you're going to enjoy. So I'm doing about half a teaspoon of each. And then with the mixed herbs, we'll give about a teaspoon. And if you get your hand in there and mix it up, I'm just gonna mix it around with a spoon. We're gonna throw it all over the, the worktop. And then we can leave that to one side when the chicken's ready. So next on the agenda guys, while the flour's done and the chicken's still marinating, we're going to work on our waffle batter. Uh, so we've got uh, two, egg, two large egg whites, some salt for a pinch of salt, some vanilla extract, we've got uh, 56 grams of melted butter which we're just cooling, uh, 94 grams of icing sugar, 
and then 64 grams of just plain flour. So to start off, nice clean bowl, egg whites in, a little pinch of salt, and then we want about a third of that flour, uh, sorry, the icing sugar, about a large tablespoon. And then we're just going to whisk this together until shock peaks. So this is going to incorporate the air into the batter. That will make the, uh, the waffle cone, or the waffle in itself, a little bit more fluffier. If you can hear me over this voice. So this is going to take two to three minutes, maybe a little bit more, but a maximum about five minutes. If you can see there already, there's a lot of air in there. It's almost doubled in size. So if you can see there guys, this is what we're looking for, soft peaks. So as you lift up, as you can see there, uh, the tips of the peaks that we do, just literally just sort of topple over, topple over, sorry, there's words in there somewhere. And it, it just manages to hold itself on the top of the mixture for a few seconds. That's what we're looking for there. So that could come out for a second. And then we want... So, We'll do it properly. The rest of the icing sugar. Also, guys, it's really important when you do anything with the egg yolks. Make sure all of the utensils you're using are really clean. Because uh, otherwise, it can, if there's any sort of fats or grease or dirt or anything that's in your bowls or anything, it can stop your eggs from sort of fluffing up. And Like if you're making a natural meringue. You, that's, you want everything nice and clean. Uh, so vanilla extract, about a teaspoon. Like that. We'll just start folding that in. I've just got a spatula. So if you can see what I'm doing there with the folding, I'm going around the bowl. I'm folding over and then come cutting back through the middle of the bowl and then cut over that way and that helps make everything incorporated nice and easy and sort of nice nice and evenly so we're going to get our sugar in and we'll start incorporating our flour again sieve that make sure you get out any impurities any lumps or anything that are in the flour We'll fold that through again. Also the folding guys, it sort of helps keep the air within the eggs. And you're not knocking all that air out. You just spend time putting it into your mixture. Then we've got some butter here. Like I said, it was melted and cooled. So we're gonna I'm going to incorporate that slowly. Again, you don't really want anything too hot going into this mixture. That's why it's important that you cool the butter. Because obviously you do have raw egg uh, whites in here. And you don't want to cook uh, the egg whites before you actually want to cook whatever you're cooking. And last that butter in. Now 
Lovely, and that's what we're looking for. Nice uh, waffle batter there, nice and smooth. Let's give it a little taste. Sweet, vanilla -y. That's going to be a little bit tasty. Mm. Okay. So, as most of the steps so far, we're going to put this in the fridge. Just let it rest for a few minutes. Whilst that's in the fridge, we're going to get on with the next couple of steps. And then we're going to come back to this waffle batter and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it. So, guys, why have things just put aside? Just a little safety note here. Um, I've put on a pan of oil. That's going to be for our chicken. I'm going to deep fry it. Obviously, you don't have to deep fry it. You do what I'm going to be doing next, which is breading your chicken, and you can also cook it in the oven. Uh, really important, if you are going to do anything like this, uh, make sure you've got yourself a little temperature probe. Um, doesn't have to be expensive. Just something so you can keep an eye on the temperature of that oil. Because, obviously, you don't want it overly hot because you're going to hurt yourself, hurt your house. Nobody wants that. And I'm not getting blamed for any insurance claims that you lot put in. Uh, if you don't want to do this, again, like I said, you can put it in the oven. Or buy yourself like a little tabletop fryer with the um, controllable temperature for the element and things like that. Um, but this is the way I'm going to do it. Uh, if you are going to do it like this, please stay safe. Okay, next step coming up, guys, is a, a chicken. We're going to bread it and get it ready for deep frying. Uh, if you can see in the order I've got here, I've just got a bowl at the back. I'm just going to drop the chicken into that. Uh, we've got our seasoned flour. And then I've just got a baking tray here with just a, a silicon mat on. Uh, this is a Barry Lewis one. Shout out to Barry Lewis. What about him? So, chicken's going in the bowl. Just so it's easier for us to handle. So, here's what your chicken looks like. You've probably all seen chicken. Uh, we're going to leave that, obviously, um, the buttermilk on there. But that's going to go in there. When you do anything like this, guys, you want a clean hand and a dirty hand. So we're going to put a couple of bits of chicken in. Shake off any excess. In the flour. Shake the bowl around. Out the flour. Onto your tray. Uh, so we're going to do this until all the chicken is coated. And there's only a few bits in here anyway. So it shouldn't take too long. So whilst this is whilst I'm doing this, I've got the oil on. And we've just got that heating up just behind me. And then I'm going to get these cooked. And then we're going to keep them warm just in the oven uh, whilst we continue with the steps after this. Uh, so after this we're going to be doing uh, like a southern style chicken gravy, which is going to be lovely. And then we're going to be cooking our waffles. So there you go guys, that's all of our chicken done. We're just going to keep that aside whilst the oil heats up. hoping you can see me there. Uh, if not, it's only my face you're missing. Uh, so the next step guys, we want to try and keep all of this sort of together as much as we can. Like I said, we've got our oil here. We want to keep an eye on that temperature. Uh, I'm looking to get about 165 to 170 out of that oil. That's in uh, degrees Celsius. So we're at one, we're coming up 147, 148 at the moment. I hate kids toys, they just go off randomly. It's quite worrying. Um, so we've got a chicken here that is coated in the flour. And then we've just got a cooling rack here. You might notice it's not necessarily a cooling rack, it is just the tray from my grill. But you know, you do what you do to make things work. 
Um, got a pair of tongs ready to go, and if we all remember the official way to make sure your tongs are working, give them a couple of twangs. So, all ready to go. We're going to have a finger, so I'm dropping it in. So drop it in, hold it at the tip, and lay it away from you, so if anything splashes, it splashes backwards. We're going to do a couple of little bits at a time. Let's get that oven on. So yeah, a couple of bits at a time. You want to make sure you get the tongs in there, make sure things don't stick into the bottom. Uh, obviously you can do this with um, like a holy spoon, anything like that. Now chicken this side, there is a few different sizes of chicken here, just because it's shot ball. Uh, mostly this chicken should take four to five minutes in the fryer. And like I said, we are going to finish it up in the oven anyway. So if you want to, you can leave your oven at about 180, between 160 and 180 degrees Celsius, and leave it in there for another 10 minutes. And it should be nice and crisp for you. Um, also, when you're doing the, the uh, coating of this chicken, you can take it out of the uh, buttermilk and then you can put it straight into breadcrumbs and then you've got a nice breaded chicken. In fact, what I might do is I might show you the difference. So I've got some flour chicken here. Still got the buttermilk, so I might buttermilk and uh, breadcrumbs some more chicken. So this has been a couple of minutes already, and you can see the colour on that chicken. Even with that flour coating, nice and crispy. Still needs a couple more minutes. So I'm happy with that colour now. That looks good. So look, we're going to leave that on the cooling rack just to dry out. And then we'll throw it in the oven just to keep warm. So that's our flour chicken. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this heat down on here now. And I'm just going to quickly break on these ones and we'll show you the difference. So there's our breaded chicken guys before it gets cooked. Uh, this was just a normal uh, store-bought golden breadcrumb from a local supermarket. Exactly the same method. Uh, essentially, I've, take, I've just had some leftover buttermilk. Uh, I've taken that buttermilk, I've put the chicken back into the buttermilk. And then dredged it into the uh, breadcrumb. So I'm just going to uh, warm this pot back up, get it back up to temperature. We'll get the uh, chicken cooked. And then we'll move on to the next step. So guys, when you're frying, you try not to overload your fryer. Uh, obviously, because your oil's already at cooking temperature. Uh, and if you put it in, it's going to cool down that oil. So you want to get things in there, sealed and cooked nice and quickly. And then they don't get filled with oil. And then they're actually not like dry and crispy, ready, lovely to eat. Like I said, if the oil's too cold, uh, most of the time the product will sort of soak up the oil and you get a really greasy sort of feeling when you bite into it. And that is not what we're looking for. So this chicken is also flavoured with that stuff that we had in the flour because it's been floured and then re-dipped into the buttermilk and then breadcrumbed. Uh, what you could do, so if you're not going to do is that, uh, use the flour, you could uh, always uh, flavour your breadcrumbs or flavour your buttermilk, whichever, depending on where you want your flavouring sort of thing. Got look at the colour on this chicken, it's only been in there for what? Maybe 45 seconds a minute? Obviously nowhere near ready yet, but... 
lovely, lovely golden colour on that chicken. So that's all the chicken out. Uh, same as before. This is our bread. Uh, this is our flour chicken. This is our uh, golden breadcrumb chicken. Like I said, I'm just going to put it in the oven. Just keep warm and finish off. So I've turned the gas off from the oil. This is where you want to be particularly safe. I'm going to move that oil back. So make sure you grab both sides of that. Just move it back. Don't muck about with it, straight back, let it cool down. Once it's cooled down, uh, we can uh, decant the oil, sieve it through, and it will be good for another, another turn. So the next thing we're looking at doing, guys, is we're gonna get our uh, ingredients on for our Southern style chicken gravy. So in this front pan here, I've got about 50 grams of um, butter and flour. We're just going to cook that down, cook the flour out, and turn that into a roux. And then in the back pan, we're going to be putting some just very short, basic shop bought chicken stock. I mean, everything's basic today. I don't know if you've noticed that. A lot of things have been basic. So we're going to do, oh, we'll just do all of it, we'll do all of it, I'm not scared. So I put the chicken stock in a pan at the back, we're going to get that hot because when you're doing things like, uh, when you're putting things into a roux, and if you're making things like a uh, bechamel sauce or things like that, you know, thickening things in a roux, you want your uh, liquid hot as well because when you're putting things into the roux you need to bring it to the boil and then beat it back down to make it like a reef uh, take out any lumps and things like that and obviously if you've got a cold liquid going in it doesn't work so well so Just going to work that butter through into there. We need to cook this flour out, which takes a few minutes. And we're cooking the flour out. If you're not used to a term like that, this means we're going to cook the flour. Because uh, otherwise, if you don't cook the flour enough, when you taste your sauces, you'll get uh, a floury taste at the end. And obviously, we want this to taste of chicken or chicken stock, not flour. So, just a good couple of minutes just to cook the flour off. Now how is everyone? I hope you're all well. Leave a little message down in the comments if you're okay, if you made it this far in the video. Let me know if this one excites you, if you're going to give it a try. Uh, so we're going to move on to our whisk now. Like I said, this stock hasn't got to be boiling, just got to be hot so you can bring it back up to temperature. So we go a little at a time, and obviously the flour is going to help thicken that sauce. So if you can see that there, what it's doing to that, I need to get it there. You go. So that's gone really thick now. So we just need, again, you want to bring it up as quickly as you can to temperature, and then you can remove it from the heat. Once it's boiling, beat it until it's really smooth, back on, next bit in, and you always want to go a little at a time. Back up. Because then you know how thick you want your actual sauce. the last of that in. Now this will be quite 
without a few other ingredients, this would be quite reminiscent to like a KFC gravy. I think in the original KFC gravy, obviously they used the the bits from the fryer as like a flavouring, and then there's like uh, in the original recipe there's like cream and milk and things like that as well. So I think that is the oven and fryer everything all over the top of the oven. That's what that's there. Let's just get a little spoon. So it does need seasoning, a bit of thickness. I'm quite happy with that. We've got a, a nice dropping consistency. So what we can do with that is we can coat our spoon, shake off any excess, and if it holds itself on the spoon when you mark an X, it's perfect. Like I said, this does need a really good seasoning. Because that chicken stock is just, like I said, a generic chicken stock is not one that I've made. So the flavour is just chicken. But yeah, that's that. I'm going to season that. We're going to move on to the next thing. So guys, this is what we're going to be doing with our waffle batter. We've got our little, we've got a waffle comb machine here. I've got some oil on some kitchen roll. Roll, the, roll it on. You can roll it on if you want. You can roll on deodorant. Nice and evenly spread. Uh, and quick note to you all this is the first time that I've used this machine, so I have no idea how this is going to turn out. We're going to go on a journey together. So, like I said, oil on. The plug is on. Uh, so this machine doesn't have numbers, it just has a zero and a max. So we're gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna warm it up until, what we're we saying, six and... I'm gonna put it on about eight o'clock, and then we're gonna see what goes on there. We've got, I only really need one cone to work, but we're gonna see what happens. So these cones do only take about, like a minute 45, I think, uh, that sort of time. So, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to get the batter out. We need about a teaspoon at a time. The machine washes down. What can possibly go wrong? So, waffle batter there. As you can see, I put it into a fresh bowl earlier on. So, according to the machine, it's ready to rock and roll. Um, also it comes with, so this machine was from eBay, it cost me about £20, uh, so it comes with this little device and that's what's going to sort of create our comb shape once it's done. Here goes nothing guys, machine's hot, spoon. Might need two spoons. So apparently that just goes in the middle. And then that goes down. And then I'm going to set off all your devices. Alexa, time up for one minute. One minute, starting now. I do apologise for the answer remark. Oh, it's all coming outside. Uh, we've got a slight leak, but this is number one. We're going to see how it goes. I'm not scared, you're scared. So that you didn't have to listen to me saying, mm -hmm. uh, again, um, I've had the one minute, giving it a quick check, it's not quite there yet. Put her back on for 45 seconds, we're going to see what happens. I'm a little bit excited. Um, so, I checked it, 
and that happened. So I put I put it on for hotter. We put it up to around ten o'clock now. Um, but I mean, if we treat it like a pancake. First one always sticks, so all we gotta do is start again. We'll get a little bit of kitchen towel. We're gonna again like I said that was the first time I've used the machine. Some might say that I probably should have done a test run but we'll re-oil and re-go I think I need more of a blob though and we're going to start it further at the back We'll see what happens. I mean, to be honest though, that tastes good. Mmm. So we're on to something. So uh, that's been a little bit longer than what I initially said. This has been about four and a half to five minutes. As you can see, this is the colour we're looking for. So, very carefully with a paddock knife. We're going to come around and get that off of there, straight down, you want to get that about three quarters of the way down, towards the end, get that onto the cone, fold your end over and then roll. You need to work quick because that because that happens. We'll get there. So attempt number three is on. But as you can see, we were nearly there. This is exactly the kind of thing we were looking for. Just quite didn't do it. I quite didn't do it quick enough. And you can see the mess that's coming out of there now, but we will ignore that for a second. As you can see, we've got a nice cone now. It's hardened up nicely. Temperature's really good. Nice and sweet on the back end. It's there, it just didn't do it quick enough. So, we're gonna leave this one cooking. And hopefully, we get this one. Third time lucky. Okay, so I'll put this up to just after 11 o'clock. This has been on for about two minutes now, and this is where we just need to go for it, because it's got a good color on the back end. It's coming off a lot easier. Come on, bro, 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 bro. Oh, I've never been so stressed in my life. Oh my god! I think we did it! I mean, the colour's not perfect at the top, but I think that's something that I can work on. But it's got a beautiful colour at the bottom. Now, this does set really quickly, so if you are going to try this, um, yeah, you need to work quite quickly once you take it out. But I mean, homemade attempt, uh, cone attempt free, I'm liking it. So I'm going to turn that off, wipe down, we're going to plate up this one. And then we're going to see how it looks. So guys, this is the way I'm going to plate up. We've got our cone here, chicken. It's just to the side there. And then we've got our gravy, and I've got some sliced bread chilli there. Just for a little bit of pep up towards the end. 
So I think what we do is we follow the uh, the Cornetto uh, philosophy, and we go a little bit of chicken gravy towards the bottom. I'm going to use this breaded chicken, but as you can see, they both look fantastic. Let's get one that's not, there you go. Oh, we're too far away. So this is our breaded chicken, or our floured chicken. This is our breadcrumb chicken. I think the breadcrumb chicken just looks a tiny bit better. So we're gonna go with that. A couple of goujons in. We've got two large goujons there. Oh, they've done that, look lovely. We're gonna go A little bit more gravy on top. And some red chilli sprinkled on top. Oh, I can't wait to get into that. So there we are, guys. There's our chicken and waffle cone. I've got that just in a little waffle stand there, just so I haven't got to completely hold it. Let's get on with the eating. So here we are, guys. This is my little twist on chicken and waffles, a homemade little waffle cone. Now this uh, recipe for the waffle cone was just an ordinary waffle cone recipe. So you could use this for homemade ice creams, anything like that. Inside we've got our uh, breadcrumb chicken, a homemade chicken gravy. We've just topped it off to pep it up uh, with some fresh red chilli. This is something that I've uh, wanted to do uh, for a while, like I said at the intro. Uh, this was an idea concocted between me and another work colleague of mine, and it's finally come true. So, here's to you, man. Mm. Oh my god. That oh, it's mind blowing. That's unreal. So the chicken, I kick off with the main bit there. The chicken, still really soft. Um, that coating, unbelievable. Uh, from all the uh, seasoning that we put through that flour, everything's really balanced. Nothing's really overpowering. It's still really crispy. <coughs> Excuse me. The gravy complements it tremendously, like really well. Like I said, that was just a normal store bought uh, chicken stock that I made the gravy from. If you made that chicken stock yourself, my God, that stock would be unreal. You could put any flavouring you want in there. You could really pep it up and make it intense. And then make the gravy exactly the same way. Flavour city, mate. Absolute flavour city. That waffle cone, third time lucky. I think we still, I still need to sort of perfect it a little bit. But that's the first time I've used that machine today. Third time lucky, I can't believe how, how good that came out. Uh, a little bit softer on top than I wanted. But like I said, I just need to perfect it a little bit. Really crispy on the bottom. And it's holding up really well. I'm going to have one more. Mmm. So if you like chicken and waffles, I urge you, urge you to give that a go. That is, that's unreal, honestly. But sadly, that brings us to the end of today's video, guys. Uh, any ideas that you've got in the future you want to see, stick it down in the comments below. You can find me all over social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, all the links will be down in the description. Please, 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 please like this video. It really helps me out. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Keep up to date with all the videos that are coming to the channel in the future. And last but not least, don't forget to feed your appetite. Go check out all the other videos on the channel. Find something you like. Make it. Enjoy it. Love it. 
and hopefully you have a wonderful day guys take care